Hello and welcome to Pine Environmental Pittsburgh. Today I will be showing you how to use and calibrate the Hawk 2100Q turbidity meter. So we have a quick card in the case for basic use and function. We also have a manual inside underneath the plastic insert for your reference. We have the unit itself, the turbidity meter. And then there are also Kimtep wipes in the case to use to wipe off the vials, as well as silicone oil. We'll use that later. We also have a foam insert that contains two sample vials and the four calibration standards we'll be using today. So we're going to start by turning the unit on with the blue power button at the bottom. I'm going to start by taking out the calibration standards. I just want to make sure that I know which is which. Each one is different and they will be used in a specific order. So we're just going to take all these out and make sure we're using the correct one first. So to calibrate, we're going to use the left button that looks like a graph symbol. And this screen should appear. It's going to prompt you to insert the 20 NTU standard into the top of the unit. So we're just going to take a look at our sample vials and see which one has the 20 NTU standard in it. Each one should be marked. Once we find which one is the 20 NTU, we're going to gently swirl the vial to get the white powder inside to equally distribute throughout the vial so we can get an accurate reading. Um, never shake these vials, it will create air bubbles and that can disrupt the calibration reading, which could lead to an inaccurate calibration. So before we insert the standard, we're gonna take out the silicone oil and then we're going to take out the Kemptech wipes. We're going to use these to wipe down the vial to get a better reading. Going to get out the silicone oil, unscrew the cap, put a very small drop on the side of the vial that we're about to use. Just a small, small drop will work. Give it a little squeeze, just a single drop like that, not very big, you don't need it very much. Then we're going to take the Kimtech wipe and we're going to wipe the vial off to make sure that there are no fingerprints or anything that could disrupt the calibration reading. So we're just gonna move the silicone oil around with a Kimtech wipe, give it a nice coating. Then we're gonna line up this arrow with the little notch marker on the front of the insertion place, just like that. We're gonna firmly stick that down in there, make sure it's secure, and then close the lid. After we close the lid, we're going to set it on a flat, stable surface, and then we're going to press the button to read. This may take a minute. It's stabilizing. Uh, make sure not to bump the unit while it's stabilizing. Try to keep it in a place where it's not going to get jostled. I'm just going to put my silicone oil over here so that it doesn't spill or get on anything. While I'm waiting, I might take out the next calibration standard to make sure it's the correct one. Again, we're just going to gently swirl this to make sure that all of the white powder inside is evenly distributed throughout the water. Please do not shake. Again, air bubbles can cause a misread when calibrating, so just gently swirl until it's there's no more sediment at the bottom of the bottle and it's all evenly distributed throughout the water sample. So once that's done reading, it'll give you a reading. It's at 20, and that's good. That's what we're looking for. Um, generally, there's a range of error, but if it's anywhere from like 18.6 to 21, generally speaking, that is a good reading. It will tell you if the reading is not acceptable. 
Next, we're going to insert our 100 NTU standard, but first we're going to take our silicone oil again. We're going to place a small drop on the side of the vial, like so. We're going to take the same Chemtech white we just used, and we're just going to gently swirl the silicone oil around the vial, create a nice coating on there. After we do that, we're going to line up the arrow with the notch on the hole, and then we're going to insert the calibration standard. Close the lid, make sure it snaps shut, and then we're going to press the read button on the far right of the unit. Again, while it's stabilizing, please make sure that the unit is not jostled or moved in any way, as this may disrupt the calibration reading. I'm going to take out my next vial, which will be the 800 NTU. There is much more um, white sediment in the bottom of this, so it may take an additional amount of swirling to get all of that off of the bottom. You want to make sure that there's none resting on the bottom before you do the reading. So just do a fair amount of swirling and tilting of the vial, um, just some gentle agitation, no shaking or any crazy movements, but just combining the sediment in with the water. Still a little bit of sediment on there, so just going to give it a couple more gentle swirls to make sure that combines. You can also potentially take the vial and just gently roll it in your hands. That can also help. Okay, so our reading for the 100 NTU came out as 96.3, so that's good. Um, not exact, but it, it won't be exact every time. Um, and our 800 NTU vial seems to be properly agitated and ready for use. So we're going to open up the top and take out the 100 NTU. Go ahead and place it back in the foam. We're going to take our 800 and our silicone oil, add a small dollop of oil to the vial, just like we did with the others, and again, wipe it with the Chemtech wipe, create an even coating all over the bottom of the vial. Um, it's important that after you do this with the silicone oil, you try not to touch the bottom of the vials only because it may smudge and create an inaccurate reading. So you just want to kind of try to hold it by the cap only before you put it back into the turbidity meter for the reading. So just line up that notch. Gently place it in. Make sure the cap is secure and press the read button. So it's asking for the 800, so that's what we just put in. We're going to go ahead and hit read, and again, let it stabilize. Try to jostle it as little as possible. Just kind of let it be until it completely stabilizes and gives us the reading. Looks like our reading has stabilized and is complete. 806, that is a pretty good reading. Well within the accepted guidelines of the unit. So there is one last step. To complete this calibration, we're going to remove the 800 NTU, place it back in the foam insert, and next there will be a final vial which says 10 NTU on it. That will be our verification standard. So we're going to gently swirl. It shouldn't take very much. This one has the least amount of um, sediment in the bottom, so it shouldn't take very much to agitate it and get it combined. You may not even notice any in there, but I assure you it is there. We're going to repeat the silicone oil wipe down that we did with the rest of the vials for our reading. Just give that a nice good wipe. And then we are going to put that in the unit. We're going to line up the little line with the notch. So you're going to hit done to save the results before we insert. Um, those are the readings that we got. We're going to click store on the right. It's going to ask then for the 10 NTU verification standard. When it does that, we already have our vial prepped. So we can go ahead and insert that. 
ensure it's the 10 NTU that you're using. Go ahead and place that in, snap down the lid, and press read. And then this will just take a minute to stabilize. So I'm going to take that time to get my silicone oil put back together, ready to put back in the case. Okay, so we got our reading, 9.51. That's not too bad, still within the accepted range. Um, the unit has a range that it will allow the calibration standards to be in. If it's out of range, it may require additional calibration, but this one says we're good. So it's within the 9 to 11 range. All good. So we're going to press done after we remove the vial. Place that back in the foam insert. We also have our sample vials, so next I will show you how to do an example reading in the field. Obviously I'm not in the field, but I can give you an example of how you're going to conduct those readings when you are in the field. So these vials, the lid does unscrew. Uh, we're going to make sure that we exit out of our calibration menu before starting the reading. So we're just going to remove the top from the vial. We're going to take our sample water. We're going to go ahead and fill this little vial up um, almost to the top, not overflowing. Um, maybe just leave like a, sm a small amount of air between the liquid and the lid. So that looks about good. going to reattach the cap, make sure it's good and tight. It is very important that you wipe off and dry your vials before you insert them into the turbidity meter. If water enters into the slot for the standards, it causes water damage on the inside of the unit and uh, you could possibly be charged with a repair fee if it damages the un unit. So please be sure to dry off your sample vials before you use them for a reading. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the verification standard and the calibration standards. We're going to take a small dot of silicone oil on the outside of our sample vial. We're going to wipe it off with our Kimtech wipe. Again, another benefit to drying off your vial first is that you can complete this step, with, which will give you a more accurate reading. Um, so we're going to go ahead and stick that inside, and we're going to press read and this will give us the turbidity of the water sample we just collected. All right, so 48. So 48 is the turbidity of the sample that we just tested. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew the top and dump my sample out back into my collection cup. Make sure I get as much of it out as possible, dry off the vial a bit, and reattach the lid. I'm going to dry it off again before I put it into the foam insert, just to make sure that there's not a, a wet mess on the foam insert. And there you go, turn off the unit and we're done. And then I'm just going to place everything back in the case. The silicone oil goes in the slot underneath the unit. The foam insert goes in the slot next to the unit. And then we can just discard this Kimtech wipe. It's disposable, we don't need it back. Um, you can go ahead and throw that away. And then we'll just replace it for the next rental. I'm gonna put our manual back in underneath our insert if we used it. And then we're going to go ahead and take our quick card and just tuck it right into the side right there so that it fits nicely inside the case and doesn't get folded. And that's the Hawk 2100Q turbidity meter. Thanks for watching.